So going back to the whole three month thing, where do you think they should be targeting performance wise? Like obviously it probably should be like with it being a a assuming it's a real thing, a console like device, it should probably be faster than the Steam Deck. Otherwise it doesn't really make any sense as a device. But where do you think it should be? It's it's a tough thing to answer because the best would be a device that is capable of 4K gaming, right? 4K TVs are relatively prevalent. Some people are like, it's going to be a device that's going to be living in the living room. It's going to be connected to a TV. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll want to be able to output at 4K. That said, that's super expensive and it's relatively tough. In the PC space, we kind of have 1440 screens that are like the great middle ground for people to actually have like a high resolution display without having to like push 4K, like 4K gaming. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I. Because it's also the price Probably, point that's a concern. Yeah, I, I would say, like, their they're, they're most likely target is probably, like, an Xbox Series S uh, class of device, but with more memory. Because mm. that's, that is one issue with the Xbox Series X, that the memory uh, is a bit constrained. You for said game S before, and then you said X. Which one are you Sorry, using? I said uh, the S, as in uh, Sierra. Sorry, that, that might be my accent showing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the Xbox Series Sierra, let's call it that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is memory constrained, uh, which is an issue for game developers right now. Uh, so hopefully with more VRAM and more memory than this Xbox Series Sierra, uh, but uh, something that would be able to play like comfortably uh, at least 1080p gaming in the highest settings. And then uh, for, uh, for 4K, targeting 30 FPS, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Because this is a problem we're starting to see with the Steam Deck, where it's... It's starting to struggle with some newer titles. It's I know Valve's talked about wanting to do like a a new version when there is a revolutionary jump in performance. They don't want to just have, you know, a new device every year and just cranking them out. I, I hope they do make something eventually. That would be nice. Um but the, the, the problem you're going to have like, like no matter what you do, right? It's going to become outdated. And with the I, I've got I've 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 got plenty of things to say about the current way that game development's done. I really I really hate all this insist insistence on like upscaling tech and just l don't stop stop trying to have such high fidelity textures that you then need to sc scale down and then scale back up. There's a I it's a whole problem. Um, <laughs> Yeah, part part of it is the facilities that are provided by game engines like Unreal Engine, which does automatic LOD management and stuff like that. Before, in previous engines, developers had to actually optimize their games. They had to create their own level of detail meshes and everything. Now the engines do it for you, and game budgets balloon to such a level that it's just easier for them and for their workflow to have the engine manage that for them. Mm -hmm. Which, in a sense, it's great. It allows high fidelity gaming for devices that can actually run those games. Mm -hmm. But you're leaving all those devices behind by taking those shortcuts. One yeah. great example of that is the new Indiana Jones games, which only <laughs> runs if you have ray tracing hardware. And I'm sure as a game developer, I was like, what? Not yes, uh, the new Indiana Jones and the Great Circle requires ray tracing hardware to run. That is in their minimum requirements. It will, ref I don't know if it refuses to run, I sh probably so if there's no uh, baked in lightning, but it does require ray tracing to run. If you open the Steam page, it is in the, the minimum requirements. GPU hardware ray tracing required. That is insane. Yep. <laughs> and, I mean... Yes, it's simpler as a as a game, uh, like a level designer and everything to say, okay, well, it, I do have higher quality lighting and I don't have to manage and bake all my shadows and the game mm -hmm. looks great. And it's way less work for me to create like good looking environments than having to create those light maps and having to actually place point lights and everything to make things look as I intend them to look uh, based on the art direction that I was given. Uh, but you're like... Ray, tra like, ray tracing hardware 
I starting I started to become good with like 30 30 uh, 30 series G, mm -hmm. like Nvidia GPUs. Before it existed, but you were sacrificing a lot of performance. Yeah. yeah. So all those people with like 5-year-old GPUs, 6-year-old GPUs that are still in the 20 series, they're left behind or they have a poor yeah, 2060 uh, is the games. minimum required card for the game. But you're not, you're not having great experience. Yeah, you're not having a great experience playing that on a, on a 2060, let's be honest. No. Uh, Apparently, and, and, it's targeting 60. If you're targeting 60, I imagine there's going to be dips below it, though. Or, or I, I haven't played that title. Or it works, but the amount of, uh, of ray passes that it does is so low mm -hmm. that the light is extremely blocky. Right, right. And and the quality isn't great. So that's another possibility as well, right? But you're not... L let's be honest, at that point, the the visual degradation affects, like, your enjoyment of the game. Mm -hmm. Because it is, from what I've heard, a very atmos atmospheric game, and it's really fun to play. Uh, but... You're choosing to leave out a whole class of people who don't have the latest hardware. And... At some point, yeah, like we've done that with rasterization before. Games used to be software rendered, and then you needed like voodoo cards and like 3D accelerator cards. Like, we will see those shifts. Mm -hmm. But I think that shift is happening a bit too soon at the moment. Uh... I think the difference as well is we're seeing. Here's, here's another one of hot takes. I, I hate ray tracing. I think every game that's done ray tracing actively looks worse than it could if they just put effort into doing the lighting properly. Um, there's mm -hmm. this insistence on making... Every, like we, it, it stopped for a while. It was very nice. But when like the, the PS3 came out, there was this like you know big push for re more realistic graphics. And things slowed down. And now that hardware's gotten really good and you legitimately can do, you know... If not photo <clears throat> photorealistic, really, really close. And I mean, movie productions are using Unreal Engine yeah, uh, yeah. as part of their toolkit. So, and what you're seeing is rather than focusing on art style, you're seeing games that are like, oh, let's just make it look like real life, and that's fine for some games. But when every game from a AAA studio comes out and it has the exact same art style. I don't like if you show me a screenshot from ten different AAA games. I I legitimately could not tell you which ones they're from. Yeah, and and we've had that happen before. Uh, if you remember, if you ever gamed in the end of like the, the two thousand to two thousand ten, mm -hmm. like in the two thousand seven to two thousand twelve period, every game was gritty and brown. Oh yeah, no, uh, I, I do remember the uh, the. <laughs> Games. yeah i remember that that was fun yeah it, it was yeah so it was like gears of war started that, yeah, that yeah, trend yeah. and just every single game just looked like gears of war and gamers like grew tired of it pretty quickly mm -hmm. uh we're seeing that push like to ultra realistic lighting and ultra realistic uh characters which i mean I, yes it's great does it improve my get like my gameplay enjoyment eh, not really like the best titles that i've played this year have been indie titles that let, let's say okay Bellatro for example <laughs> it's not ultra realistic <laughs> it doesn't have great graphics but it's a fantastic game uh, I'm playing currently a thousand times resist very sci-fi look fantastic game that in a genre that I would no, not normally play uh, but I've been enjoying it so far on my Steam Deck it's been great uh, games like Tunic which have their own like distinct card style Hollow Knight uh, I, I played a bit of so, uh, Hades 2 when that the early access came out. It, beautiful. Yeah. Granted, it's, yeah, it's just Hades 1, but that's all I wanted. <laughs> yeah, and, and Super Giant Games have such a distinctive uh, visual style. Uh, their games have been great visually. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's not super realistic, but it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking of Ori, the Ori series, Ori mm -hmm. and the Forest, Ori yes, and the Will yes, of the Wisps. Yes. Beautiful games. Fantastic gameplay and everything. If you're into Metroidvania type games, uh, great games. Well, um, later today, I'll be streaming a game called uh, Nine Souls, which if anyone yes. has heard of that one, yeah, it's got a beautiful art style. Yes, fantastic. I'm stuck in one of the bosses right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, yeah, so Nine Souls is a fantastic game as well. That's that's really I I love platforming and combat based Metroidvanias. Mm -hmm. Such a great game. Uh, Animal Well, another great. My brain's like, been Metroid too smooth Brainia. for that game. <laughs> well, you can still play like the first the the first layer of the game. It doesn't necessarily revolve like. Uh, it's based on like too much puzzle, so it's mm. it's it's a great playthrough. I definitely would and check it out. And after that, though. if you're, yeah, if I, I would say other than the very last layer, uh, most people should be able to solve those puzzles. It's not that, uh, they're not that obscure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think games like this they take advantage of more modern tech, whilst having a distinct art style. Like a, a game like Animal World, it uses three D lighting for a 2D art style. And you see this a lot for, and you, like, like a 3D-esque lighting. Well, like, actually a really yeah. good, a, a really good example of this actually is, um, um, oh, Hollow Knight is, is a 3D scene uh, rendered the, and everything. What is the hmm. Square Enix um, 2D, 3D game? There's like a mix of art style. Um, 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 oh, uh, I know what you're talking about. Um. Uh, list of Square Enix games. <laughs> I oh god, this company makes too many goddamn oh, games. I, yeah. Uh. It's not bravely no, it's not bravely default. I've got that in my head, but it's not. It's uh. Octopath Traveler. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Like that's a game that takes advantage of modern lighting, modern game design tools, but has a very, very, very distinct art style. Mm -hmm. Yep. And <laughs> funnily enough, those games run great on a mobile device, on the Steam Deck. You don't need super realistic graphics and super realistic lighting to make a game fun. Nintendo. Game game fun. Nintendo was the prime example of this. People always yep. say on oh, Nintendo has the, well, with the exception of the GameCube, Nintendo's always had the slowest console in that generation. But it doesn't matter. The only reason the GameCube was faster is because no one knew how to program for a PS2. Because <laughs> it was a weird, weird architecture. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, true. But like, Nintendo has never been about graphical fidelity. They've always been, we are Nintendo, we make games first, we have an art style. You look at a Nintendo game, you know it's a Nintendo game. Like, there's yeah. no question about that. And yeah. I think there's... It... Go ahead, sorry. What, what I was going to say is, limitation breeds creativity. Yeah. It, it did bite them in the ass this generation, uh, to be completely honest. They, there's been some quite sizable performance issues with uh, Tears of the Kingdom when it came out. They did man Fair manage enough. to fix it. The Pokemon games on the Switch are... The Pokemon uh, games are cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to be they're, fair, they're Game, not Freak, that... Game Freak is one of the laziest game developers on the planet. Every, anytime yet, a third-party studio makes a Pokemon game, it's just better. 